Hey guys, welcome to the video. Now today I'm gonna to show you how you can create your own texture in SketchUp Pre. Uh, let's do it. Here's the example of my home office and what I wanna do is actually change the flooring texture. Now I actually imported these textures using uh, the 3D warehouse. So what's happened recently is there's been an update to SketchUp Pre, meaning that you can now actually create your own textures, which is awesome. Before you couldn't do that, so then you were kind of limited to the, the palette uh, within SketchUp itself, which is actually kind of a bit rubbish to be honest. Like you've got colors, patterns. When it comes to wood, you know, your options are pretty basic and pretty horrendous. So the first thing you want to do is actually look for a texture that you want to use. Um, it's normally a good idea to put seamless in as well, so that means when the texture maps on your object, it actually has no seams, so you hopefully won't see the seams. Now there's actually a bit of an art to finding correct texture images because sometimes they will look okay, but then when, once they map, you'll see that actually the lighting is different from one end of the image to the other. So you get this kind of like wavy effect, it doesn't look very good really. So if you type seamless in, uh, normally you'll come up with a better option. And then basically just scroll around until you find something you like. I like this one here and I think it should map fairly well. I mean, we'll find out in a second. But what you do then is just save the image. I've already done it, so I've saved it in a folder called textures, so that's ready to go. So once you've got your image saved for your texture, what I recommend you do is just draw a rectangle um, kind of outside your model. It doesn't matter where it is. And then what I like to do is always make sure I group it. Now, if you go into your material section, I recommend just clicking on a color and then it doesn't matter which color it is and just apply it to the rectangle that you've just drawn. So if you then click on the home section, you'll see a list of all your materials within your model. Now I've obviously got quite a few materials in here already. If I scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see my material here, which I've just created. If I click on that and then if I scroll back up, a little pen icon now has appeared and that means I can now edit that material. And then here it allows me to edit the opacity of the uh, color. We can actually change the color itself or we can upload a texture. This is the thing that we want to click on where we can upload our JPEG image or PNG that we just downloaded. So from here we can then upload our JPEG image. So if I go into my file and then click on the image, click open and then click use image. So now our image has been placed and replaced the color of the initial texture that we had. From here we can adjust the width and height. So this means that when it's uploaded your image, it's actually kept the original ratio. Sometimes when you overwrite other textures, it will basically stick to the, the first textures, textures ratio. So if you were trying to basically replace um, the image one for one, so say if I wanted to replace this for flooring one for one by editing my existing texture, it might actually mess up the aspect ratio of the image. That's why I recommend drawing a separate entity, like a separate rectangle or cube, and then applying a te the texture there, and then you can make the adjustments and make sure it looks correct before applying it to your model. So if I want to adjust the width and height, I think it's, it's basically too small at the moment, so it probably wants to increase it by about 1000, so basically three times the size, and that actually looks about right to be honest. Um, and you can see this, this image is mapping quite well. Uh, you may find that your image is not mapping very well and it'll be a case of either actually photoshopping it, you could kind of edit the image to make it more symmetrical and more, um, more seamless essentially. But this one maps really well. So I can click done now. And now I have a texture. Now if I just want to apply this to my flooring, hopefully I can just grab the bucket tool. I hit Alt on my keyboard and then use the color picker. So now I've selected that, that color. And I should be able to just click on my floor if it's not grouped. So I'm, I'm actually gonna have to go into my floor and then press the B on my keyboard and then click. And that will apply the texture. Now if I wanted to adjust the position of the texture or actually adjust the scale, there's another way to do it. So if I double click into my face, make sure the texture is applied. And then if I right click it, I can go to this area that says texture, uh, sorry, texture, and then position. And from here, I can actually move the texture, I can scale the texture, I can skew the texture. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do, but I'm gonna kind of leave it how I had it because I think it works fine as it is. So hopefully that shows you how you can create a texture in SketchUp. This does apply to uh, the full version of SketchUp, but I just showed it in SketchUp free um, because people, more people have access to it. 
Now, if you're looking to learn SketchUp in the new year or learn how to 3D model, I have um, a, a load of different Skillshare courses over on my Skillshare and I've got lessons on interior design, bathroom design, office design. Um, this was actually one of my classes that I taught on there, which was designing a home office using um, some dimensions that you take within the class. Now, if you use my links below, um, you will get one month free of Skillshare Premium, which is really good. So it means you can use it for one month and learn all the things that you like to. But anyway, I hope this helped you and um, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.